Hey, this is Ari, and in this video, I want to share with you a little clip from one of my recent interviews with Dr. Mercola, who is a good friend of mine, who is also somewhat of a childhood idol of mine. I've been following his work since I was a teenager, since I was 16 or 17 years old, over 20 years ago. And uh, I highly recommend it. This was a power packed interview and you'll see why in this little clip. And if you want to listen to the full length interview, which I highly recommend, uh, the link for that is down in the description below. Enjoy. But what, but one variable that I think is crucial to all of these things. And as I mentioned, I don't think I've heard you discuss is oxygen. Mm -hmm. Now, oxygen is critical for mitochondria. The reason why mitochondria exist is they are, of course, the organelles that allowed us to use oxygen as a fuel substrate. And essentially, the oxygen serves as the final electron acceptor as the electrons are being passed from the fuel sources that we're eating. So if you don't have mitochondria, there's very little use for oxygen. In fact, it turns to be quite toxic. So the, the challenge becomes, and this is so important for the COVID-19, is because we've, we've known it's becoming really clear that putting patients on ventilators is not a good strategy. Mm -hmm. It's killing most of them. So actually, and I, I've known and speculated for months now that hyperbaric oxygen, the treatment of choice for these individuals and just, the, but I didn't have any data on it. Well, just this morning, I listened to a presentation from a group of physicians in a Louisiana hospital. They have a chamber that's integrated with the hospital. They have six hyperbaric chambers. These are hospital grade chambers, Seacrest, the acrylic tubes that are clear and, you know, the full blown 100% oxygen. And they, their small community, they, they didn't have, well, they had, it, it was becoming prevalent. And in their hospital, they hadn't yet found the need to put any patients on ventilators until like just literally five or six weeks ago and their first patients, they, they, they used, used this, this as a legal way to, to allow them to do it. And essentially they've treated 11 patients now a hundred percent successfully, no need for ventilators. So none of the patients went on ventilators and a hundred percent of them came off. And interestingly, all of those patients, cause they reviewed all the patients, all of them had, were, had the, the comorbidities you would expect. They were, overweight, had high blood pressure, most of them were aged, and a large, fair share of them were African-American. And the reason that being African-American is a risk factor is not because of their ancestry, but because of the color of their skin. It's so dark and deeply pigmented, they can't get enough vitamin D from the sun. So normally the, there's a strong correlation with low vitamin D levels. It was just a study that, that came out, I'm sure you saw it, the, the one linking low vitamin D status with oh, yes. and massively fact, elevated risk of dying. Yeah, and we work with uh, grassrootshealth.org for like the last 13 years and we help fund them. And they, they have a preprint out. They looked at 212 patients that they reviewed their charts from Southeast Asia. And they found uh, that of the, those who had mild illness, all of them had COVID-19 and they looked at their blood vitamin D levels. Those with mild illness, 96% had normal vitamin D levels, which they quantified as over 30 nanograms, which I would say is not normal. It's, it's okay, but it's certainly not optimal. Mm -hmm. Closer to 60 would be better or even 80. So, uh, but, and then the, the ones who are serious or critical, the two, to uh, some most severe categories, only 4% of them had the normal vitamin D level. So, I mean, to, I mean, obviously it's a correlation study and correlation does not prove causation, but it's a pretty strong <laughs> yeah. suggestion that uh, vitamin D has something serious uh, to do with this illness right. and yeah, I mean, your immune system. I mean, the, the, the magnitude of the effect was, yeah. I mean, it was something like to go from vitamin D sufficiency to, to deficiency was like, I think a 19 fold greater risk of, of yeah. having severe symptoms and dying. It's just crazy. You know? So, I mean, it's just so, I mean, the, the, one of the values of this, this pandemic or pandemic would be more accurate is that it's showing us the importance of really optimizing our health.
Mm. And the consequences, the really severe, significant consequences of not doing that. Now, no one gets a free ticket out of here alive. We're all going to pass at some point. But the key is, is to be resilient and enjoy your health and have all the vitality and function, which you, you know, really promote with your focus on energy mm-hmm. uh, and energy blueprints, blueprint. So, you know, it's a big part of it. If you don't have an, if you're not optimizing that, you're not going to be able to create energy. Yeah. You know, you, you said something earlier that is some people might interpret as controversial and but is i think in my in my view such an important point that i want to emphasize it which is you said it's it's not really an an epidemic of covid-19 it's an epidemic of insulin resistance mm-hmm. and so so the data is something like uh from what i've seen about 86% of people in the US maybe that's specifically in new york who died are um, he had either insulin resistance cardiovascular disease or hypertension um or obesity which overlaps with those and then I think it was like 99% of the people who died from Italy um, had at least one of those conditions. So if you consider that, and, um, it, and it, you know, obviously it's, uh, it's unlikely, in my opinion, given that we know the, the mechanisms, it's very unlikely that this is just confusing correlation with causation. Um, we know that obesity and insulin resistance, diabetes, uh, causes immune senescence and, and and leads to poor immune function. So there's a very clear mechanism uh, that could explain this. And um, given that, if we were instead of to just say, just ignore those things and just try to look for a drug to fix it, if we were instead to try to fix metabolic health in individuals, we could not only prevent a massive amount of death from COVID-19, but you'd also simultaneously prevent a massive amount of deaths from cardiovascular disease, obesity, mm-hmm. neurological disease, and, yeah, and so much more. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so it's, it's not that we'd be, I'm not claiming that there's people, there's not an epidemic out there and people aren't dying from this infection. I do, yes, I do believe it's an infection on like some people, mm-hmm. but they're dying because their immune system is not optimized because of this insulin resistance. And, and if the, we didn't have this epidemic of insulin resistance, we would not have these people dying. Mm-hmm. This would be a non-issue. This would be less than the flu. Yeah. And you know, the other variable, uh, which you didn't mention was age and, and age, mm-hmm. It's going to get all of us eventually, but you do, this is the immunosenescence that you refer to that occurs and your immune system deteriorates with age. So the older you get, the more susceptible you are. Now, the other thing that occurs with age ties into the oxygen. You also get, there's a number of two important things that occur that many people don't recognize. One is that your levels of NAD plus and NADPH radically decrease. Uh, and, and I mean radically, we're talking 90, 99% and beyond once you hit over 65, 70. So the other thing that decreases, and I don't think it's related to this, but it occurs simultaneously, is a decrease in your microvasculature. Now, what mm-hmm. the heck is microvasculature? Well, that's your, your capillaries. So you, 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 and the, the importance of that is when you have a decrease in microvasculature, you're not going to be able to deliver oxygen like you need to or should to should, mm-hmm. and you won't be able to p- provide that oxygen as a fuel substrate to your mitochondria. So one of the missing parts of the equation, which actually obviously ties into its own resistance is exercise Mm -hmm. and very specific types of exercise, not long distance running or aerobic or cardio, but more the resistance training, especially under certain, certain conditions, which you're very familiar with and you've adopted for many years for since you were, you were a teenager, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, and and you get that benefit you get, because when you increase muscle mass, you're going to increase the glute four receptors or on the wall and you'll, and so it will help bring the sugar into the cell so you don't get the insulin resistance. But it also increases the microcirculation through a number of myokines that get established through the exercise. So exercise is another really crucial part of the equation to optimize your health, not down in my mind. Uh, of course, you need, you know, there's a lot of diet and nutritional components, but, you know, exercise is key too. That is frequently, in my uh, experience, given uh, uh, the back burner. Hey, this is Ari. I hope you enjoyed this video. And one more thing before you go, actually two more things. One is if you enjoyed this particular little clip, uh, the link to the full length podcast is in the description down below. So make sure to check that out. Also, one more thing. Let me ask you a question. 
what if I could show you how to double your energy levels and dramatically improve your brain function, reducing your anxiety and depression to a degree on par with antidepressant drugs, but without the side effects. Sound pretty interesting? Well, there are in fact numerous compounds that can do this, that have been shown to do this. And I'll, I'll take you through just a few of these very briefly. One of them is rhodiola rosea. And this has been shown in studies, uh, rhodiola rosea extract in people with stress-related fatigue and exhaustion to cut their levels of fatigue and brain fog in half in less than a month. Just this one compound. There's another compound uh, in my formula Energenesis called NT factor phospholipids that's been shown to help repair mitochondrial membranes and mitochondrial health to the level of healthy 29 year olds taking people with deteriorated mitochondria who are over the age of 65, restoring it to the level of healthy 29 year olds. Um, and that has been shown in numerous studies in various types of chronic fatigue, aging associated chronic fatigue, obesity related chronic fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome to increase energy levels by 30 to 45% in the span of four to 12 weeks, depending on the specific study. So dramatic improvements in a very, very short period of time. Uh, two more compounds that are amazing, I highly recommend that are in my formula, Ultra Brain, along with Rhodiola rosea. Saffron extract, this has been shown to increase levels of, um, improve your mood, I should say, and decrease levels of depression on par with fluoxetine, which is Prozac. And uh, not only that, but with fewer side effects. It's much safer and much less likely to cause negative effects than antidepressant drugs are. Acetyl L-carnitine is another compound that's been shown to dramatically improve brain health in older adults it also improve energy levels in older adults with chronic fatigue by between 40 to 50% in just the span of two to, to four months. And uh, the last thing I'll mention here is acetyl L-carnitine has also been compared to antidepressant drugs and been shown like saffron to be as effective as antidepressant drugs in combating depression, but without the harmful side effects that so often occur with the drugs. So this is just a small uh, sampling of the over 35 compounds that are in my formulas, Energenesis and Ultra Brain, that are all proven to dramatically improve energy levels, mitochondrial health and brain health and much, much more. Uh, and I highly recommend that you go check these out. If you're struggling with depression or anxiety, or brain fog, if you're struggling with stress-related ex exhaustion and burnout, if you're struggling with chronic fatigue, go check out these formulas, give them a shot. I promise you are gonna be blown away by the results. And like I said, the science has already proven that these things work. So you don't have to just take my word for it. Uh, there's lots of research to support that. And I'll even link to some of that research down below so you can verify everything that I just said for yourself. So the links to those studies will be in the description for this video uh, down below. So check them out. Uh, check out the formulas on the energyblueprint.com. Again, uh, Energenesis is the mitochondrial formula and Ultra Brain is our brain formula. Check them out, try them out, and I think you're going to be blown away by the results. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you again soon.